This is a really inexpensive, fun project and way to dress up your plain window or over door frames. You can custom size to fit whatever you wanna put it or just hang it on your wall. I found these in a craft store in Oklahoma and I loved them and wanted to duplicate them. I am so excited about this project. I didn't even freshen up my lips. I cannot wait to show you this. Was the inspiration piece. Absolute perfection. That is perfection paint and you cannot hardly duplicate it, but I'm doing my best. Right here, I just took the original piece and traced the pattern and I used a $30 to $45 jigsaw. It is a great investment and you can do many designs with it. Sure, and clamp it onto your table and make sure your blade will not cut into the table as you're doing this. It is super easy and I would encourage you to give it a go. So Iron Orchid became their own manufacturer. This is their designs before when they were with another company. Look how much they've increased. These are still good. I still use them. These are spectacular. This is Anticus Pavo Stamp. is a beautiful peacock who has feathers that layer beautifully with this like put a couple of um, stamps of his feathers down and then put this mold, it just gives dimension. If I'd have been patient, I would have maybe done that here, but I didn't. Watch the video and you'll see how to do this. And the molds uh, can be used with air dry clay, hot glue, um, sugar arts. There's multiple things you can do with these and multiple projects. And the air dry clay is about $12 around there. And it is artist grade quality. multiple colors of DIY paint. I'm just throwing this in here sideways because it was set by me. You can really custom do your trim and custom fit these pieces. I took the part that I cut out um, for this design and ended up putting it on top for a bonnet top look and I really liked it. But there are so many options you can do. Right here, I found out that the wood was really trash wood so I had to glue it together and clamp it. It was fine. It's I'm just doing this for an example. You guys can really make this amazing. All right, to use these molds, dust your molds with cornstarch and tap it out. You don't want too much in there. Roll your clay up just to kind of break it down and get it warmed up and ready to go. Not overdone though, or you'll get it too gooey. And you just push it in, and then there is a micro ridge. You can use a micro ridge or a tool like I'm using a credit card and just push it flat until you see that micro ridge show up, and you will know there'll be a nice flat surface to put it on. Use gravity, turn it over, and just let it kind of roll out. I just took these tools to kind of clean up where it didn't come out smooth. And I would really suggest if you use the letter molds to use high grade quality clay, the iron orchid is the best, to let them come out better. Right here, just use your finger, a paintbrush, put some wood glue, put some Elmer's glue, whatever kind of glue you want to use, and just place it where you want. Now I'm just taking a clean paintbrush and wiping around the casting so that the glue comes off because it will affect your paint job. For the layered chippy look I'm doing, I even added the glue off of my table right here onto it so it would be chippy and chunky and just making use of that glue. Okay, here's the original piece and look how this is coming. I love this, this is so fun. So here I'm making some more molds. It's really relaxing, it's really fun. And the air dry clay really does make cracks, so just embrace it and let it be part of this vintage look. If you wanted to use hot glue or resin, you will not have the cracking. You can make a lot of these up ahead of time and put them in the freezer and then pull them out to use them. And you don't want them to dry without gluing them down or they will curl up and warp. Right here, I'm just cutting this. And it's so satisfying. You just have to do it. Alrighty, you can paint these molds before they are dry, but you have to have a light hand or you will smash your image. The best is to wait 24 hours for the air dry clay to dry and then you can really get in there and wax after the paint's dry or do your glazes or whatever you wanna do without marring the image. All right, so here I am using a Mr. Bottle with the DIY paint. It really helps work it down into the crevices and get a first coat on. I mixed a texture medium in with this. You can let your paint set up in the air and get thicker. You can put it in the freezer and use it, but I'm using a stipple technique and creating texture and chunks and layers. After you do that and it dries just a little bit tacky, then I go and kind of smooth those peaks down a little bit. And it really makes a beautiful finish when you put your second and third layers on there. 
coming up, I had some of that textured weathered wood DIY paint left. So I just grabbed a letter that was metal and just kind of started a first coat stippling some of that on there. And you might want to subscribe and watch other things. I'm going to make a rust technique with that. Okay, here I'm using the white swan paint after the weathered wood was dry. And see how you can get a dry brush look if you don't want full coverage, and that looks really beautiful like that. But I decide to go ahead and really get in there and do a full coverage, and then I'm going to wet distress and just kind of wipe it back so it shows and just kind of, I chunk it up with a palette knife. I do all sorts of little things to just get that weathered chippy look. I love to layer a whole bunch of neutrals together. Right now I am taking Skeleton Key and just using a palette knife and just placing it here and there and yonder. I was trying to be lazy and not make that last minute bonnet top I added have to have any molds, but I couldn't do it. So I make some molds up and I have to repeat the whole paint process, which is not hard. It's just, you know, another step. So I glue some more molds on there. I add the weather wood, let it dry. I add the white swan, wipe it back with a wet cloth to wet distress. Alrighty, I let this dry and now it is time to seal DIY paint either with a water-based top coat, big top is the best, or the liquid patinas that we have, or a wax. So I work in two locations and did not have my clear wax. So I ended up using dark and it is suggested to put clear on first and then use your dark or colored waxes or it will absorb too much. So it went to dark and I was kind of sad as you'd see, even though it was beautiful, I wanted a lighter color. So what I did is I took our white dust and you sprinkle it on your wet wax and then work it in and you can wipe it back and that worked great to lighten it back up and gave it this really old weathered look. The last picture I'm gonna show you is just an example of two cheap cabinets that you could tie together with this kind of bonnet top. This one didn't particularly fit, but I still thought it looked good. Disclaimer, no cheetah pajama pants were harmed during this filming.